Oh boy, here we go, y'all. Steve Bannon has now turned on Joe Rogan, and he's going after him pretty viciously and pretty aggressively. So now let me set this up for you guys. So what happened recently is mainstream media wrote a bunch of articles about how Joe Rogan didn't want Donald Trump on his podcast because he didn't want to support him in any way, shape, or form and help him. And Joe talked about on a podcast recently, it was Lex Friedman's podcast, about how Trump's team had reached out to him a number of times. They wanted to come on the podcast. And Joe effectively decided against it and didn't want him on. Now, mainstream media is writing about this, but this has been known for a while. Joe has talked about this previously on his podcast. He said critical things about Trump previously on his podcast. Joe actually reached out to me at the time that he was in talks with Trump's team, and he asked me, hey, man, I know, like, politics is your thing, uh, so what questions would you ask Donald Trump if you had the ability to interview him? Because if I do decide to interview Trump, I want to ask real questions. Like, he knew that it's an immense responsibility to talk to the most powerful person in the world, and he didn't just want to throw softballs down the center of the plate. He didn't just want to have a regular bro conversation. He wanted to actually interview the president if he was going to interview him. And by the way, back, back at the time, Trump was still the president. So mainstream media, for whatever reason, they learned about this now, even though this has been public for a while, right? Um, and they ran a bunch of articles on it. Now, this is the first time in a long time that I've seen an article in mainstream media that effectively painted Rogan in a positive light. Because, you know, mainstream media typically has gone after Rogan, but now all the headlines of, like, Rogan turns down multiple interviews with Trump because he didn't want to help him, that's like, whether they're trying to or not, that is now more painting Joe in a positive light by their own ideology. But now here's what's happened as a result of that. People on the right, to this point, have tried to promote Joe Rogan and claim Joe Rogan for themselves. So in other words, what they do is they'll never talk about it when he says left-wing things. But anytime Joe Rogan says anything that's right-wing, they'll clip it out, they'll write articles about it, they'll talk about it, they'll claim Joe Rogan as, oh, he's one of us, he's one of us, he's a right-winger, he's a right-winger. So, but this is the first time that I've seen that change. And again, it's changing because Steve Bannon saw the article about how Trump was rejected by Rogan. And so now, having set all that up for you, let's listen to what Steve Bannon says. You know, Joe Rogan's trash-talking Trump. Where's Joe Rogan taking the $100 million of blood money from, from, uh, from, uh, from Spotify? Where is he about Spotify putting this guy's uh, rap videos up and making money off it? What? Bro, what? You know what he's talking about, guys? He's talking about, I think he's talking about that Awake the Rapper guy who was a mass shooter in Illinois. The guy who just killed at least seven people and put like dozens in the hospital. That guy was also a rapper, and apparently his stuff was up on Spotify. And so he's attacking Joe Rogan because Joe is paid by Spotify, and he's calling the $100 million he got blood money, and he's saying like, well, Joe's responsible for that. Or why hasn't he talked about this? Why hasn't he talked about this? He doesn't fucking know about this random weirdo loser who was a mass shooter, you fucking freak. What an idiotic way to try to play gotcha. What a dumb way to try to play gotcha. And look, I have criticisms of Joe. We just talked about one the other day. He just endorsed Ron DeSantis. I couldn't disagree with him more. I hope he changes his mind on that. Ron DeSantis is against raising the minimum wage. Ron DeSantis isn't even for legalizing marijuana. Ron DeSantis has signed a number of anti-free speech bills. I have criticisms of Joe. This is not one of them. This is a dumb got ya. How is Joe responsible for some dumbass rapper who puts his stuff on Spotify? Spotify probably didn't even know that that guy put his stuff on Spotify. And Steve, why, you know, there's a lesson here. The, why, didn't they, why didn't they notify the police? Why, why, what is Spotify? What? Why didn't they notify the police? This guy probably had like seven fans. Nobody knew who the fuck he was. He was incredibly creepy. And you know this, Steve. Spotify's executive saying Spotify is an accessory before <laughs> the fact, just like the parents are. Steve Cortez. And Spotify, and you got Joe Rogan over there trash talking Trump. Oh, I don't want to give. There, see, now this is what it's really about. Now, by the way, take note of how much uh, Bannon ends up like stuttering here and, and, 
and babbling and sort of falling over his words. I think Steve Bannon is drunk. I think he's drunk in this. Let me run that back in touch. Let's go. Sorry, Steve Cortez. And Spotify, you got Joe Rogan over there trash talking Trump. Oh, I don't want to give Trump any platform. No, no offense, he doesn't need your platform. He doesn't need your <laughs> low information voters. Oh, <laughs> first of all, oh, he doesn't need your platform. Really? Is that why they reached out multiple times to come on? They know he's the number one podcast in the world. They know that. They reached out because they wanted to go on his show, and they also wanted a softball interview. Joe wasn't going to do a softball interview, but they definitely wanted to go on. Don't be like, oh, he doesn't need that. Well, he lost the he lost the election, didn't he? So maybe he did need that. And to say, oh, low information voters. So now he's not just going after Joe Rogan. Now he's going after his entire audience and calling them stupid. Not a good move, Steve. Not a good move. Well, no, no offense, he doesn't need your platform. He doesn't need your low information voters, okay? <laughs> Trump deals with high information people. Oh, I love this. I love this. This is Steve Bannon who pretends to be a populist, pretends to be for the average working person. And now all of a sudden he's going full smug elitist and attacking low information voters. So what, you only care about the high information people? So what, like Ivy League educated pricks, Steve? Now all of a sudden average working people, you're too good for them and Trump's too good for them? Your audience couldn't handle worm, couldn't follow it. Start talking. Uh, uh. <laughs> all right, that reminded me, that clip, the thing about we don't need your low information voters. It reminded me of this. We won the evangelicals. We won with young. We won with old. We won with highly educated. We won with poorly educated. I love the poorly educated. <laughs> I love the poorly educated. Tremendous. Um, and then also, just so you know, with him attacking um, Rogan's audience, this is Rogan's audience here, by the way. Uh, this is a morning console poll of Rogan's audience. Among avid fans, only 23% are Democratic, 31% are Independent, 46% are Republican. When it comes to ideology, 19% are Liberal, 28% are Moderate, 54% are Conservative. So this is Steve Bannon now turning on Rogan and Rogan's fans and listeners, all because Rogan said the very tepid thing of, yeah, I didn't want Trump on the podcast because I didn't want to... I would have had to ask him real questions. I wasn't just going to throw softballs down the center of the plate. And I didn't want to inadvertently help him in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, I didn't want him on the podcast. That alone, that alone led Bannon to flip the fuck out. Which, again, this stuff is all hilarious to me because I think a lot of people talk about Rogan and have opinions about Rogan without knowing anything about him. Like, he's massively politically unorthodox. That's obvious. He was a Bernie Sanders supporter. He has a list of left-wing positions that he supports, like universal health care and higher minimum wage, etc. And uh, now he decided to endorse Ron DeSantis randomly, which is like the smarter version of Donald Trump. So now he's supporting a right-winger. So obviously he's all over the place politically. But it's funny that now um, people on the right have finally found one thing from Rogan that they view as, like, inexcusable. And to Bannon, it was like, oh, you didn't want to help Trump. So now you're stupid, and your audience is stupid. And so I guess the love affair that the right has had with Rogan is now coming to an end. Which is kind of, it's kind of funny, and it's also kind of crazy, too, because it's also, like, the same week he came out and said, I think Ron DeSantis would be a good president. <laughs> <laughs> which would mean, I mean, I guess people on the right should like him more as a result of that, right? Because that's him saying, no, I actually agree with the right now on stuff to the point where I'd support this guy for president. Whereas previously, he was all about Bernie. So, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on here other than uh, Steve Bannon is hilarious. He's petty. Now Joe is stupid and all of his uh, viewers are stupid. All because they didn't want to give Trump a smooth hand job like Steve Bannon does on a regular basis. And that's the bottom line. Bannon is a propagandist for... Trump, and he's mad that Joe didn't want to be the same thing.